I'm David Silkworth. Today I'll be going through an overview of the Cisco InterSight ServiceNow integration. In the ServiceNow store, one of the integrations featured is the Cisco InterSight ITSM or IT Service Management plugin. And you can get that from the store and install it in the existing ServiceNow instance. The installation guide has complete step by step instructions for configuration and use. One of the first steps you'll need when configuring is to do InterSight API key import to ServiceNow. So within InterSight, I will want to be logged in as a read only user in an account. And then I can go to the gear icon and settings and I can create an API key for this read only user. We use a read only user because the current capabilities are for getting data and we don't do any configuration against InterSight. Once we've generated that API key, we can take that public and private key which has been generated and we can go into our InterSight configuration within ServiceNow. So from the ServiceNow dashboard, I can go up to the upper left and I can search for InterSight. And one of the items is InterSight configuration. So if I click that, I'm coming to the InterSight configuration pages. I can specify a user defined name the host name here is intersight.com. It, it is the SaaS instance of Intersight. For the Intersight virtual appliance, you would use a ServiceNow mid server and you would specify the appliance host name. Additional details on that configuration are provided in the installation guide. Once I've done that, I will also provide that API public key that I've pulled from the Intersight and the secret key. The other configuration item that I can do on the screen is setting up incident groups and how those are managed within ServiceNow. So the alarms that come from InterSight can be created as incidents in ServiceNow. And one of the options for filtering those alarms is by alarm severity from InterSight, critical, warning, or informational. I can also click the advanced button and I could do more advanced filtering by fault code or through other parameters in the alarm. In this case, I'm doing advanced filtering and I'm looking for specific fault codes and I only want to raise incidents for those fault codes. I click save and import at that point. Next, I'll take a look at the InterSight plugin portal. So one of the items in the left-hand navigation is the Cisco InterSight portal. This is a customized portal within the plugin. This provides me with a dashboard which provides a variety of alarm and incident information, you know, when things are raised, what items are sourcing those incidents, and an overview of the specific fault codes. Also on the left-hand navigation, I get visibility into the alarms that have been pulled in from InterSight, incidents that have been raised in ServiceNow, and inventory data, including servers, hyperplex clusters, and fabric. Back in ServiceNow, I'll now take a look at the inventory and incidents related capabilities. So in inventory sync and configurable by the user on how often inventory data is synced to ServiceNow, I have an overview of servers, hyperplex clusters, or fabric interconnects that have been pulled into ServiceNow CMDB. And one of the things that that allows is relations to other configuration items in the CMDB. And as an example, I can look at infrastructure services like email servers that have been configured within ServiceNow. And I can actually link inventory automatically pulled from InterSight back into these relationships. So the runs on relationship for this email server is linked to a C220 Cisco server that's been pulled in from InterSight. I can click on that, get information like firmware versions, serial numbers, and I can also look at the other configuration item relations and linkages from this server to other resources or configuration items within ServiceNow. Down at the bottom, the related links also provides me visibility into Hyperflex clusters if that's applicable, fabric interconnects, and any faults or incidents that have been raised and associated with this configuration item. One last item to show is incident processing within ServiceNow. So if I on the upper left search for incidents, I can pull up the incidents view within ServiceNow. 
and anything that I've configured to be raised as an incident in ServiceNow can now be viewed and managed within ServiceNow. One of the capabilities that's available from ServiceNow is the ability to manage that incident workflow, including configuration of emails if needed or other messaging of incidents as they're raised in ServiceNow. Here I've done a basic configuration to email me as incidents are raised from ServiceNow. Here's an example of one of those emails that has been sent automatically when the incident was created in ServiceNow. The Intersight plugin is periodically polling for those alarms and can automatically raise an incident back to the end user. And if I click on that take me to the incident link here from this automatically generated email, it will link me back to that specific incident in ServiceNow where I can go and manage the workflow for that. It will give me information on the underlying alarm that was raised for that, in this case, fault code F0207, the affected item there. And if I scroll down a little, I can again do any sort of workflow on this incident, and it will show me affected CIs or configuration items. In this case, that links me back to ServiceNow's CMDB, where I can look at the specifics and any other relationships for the incident raised on this server and any services that it may be running within ServiceNow. Thank you for the time, and for more information, please visit intersite.com help.